Here we're going to be looking at a perpetual inventory system. We're going to just be looking at the basics here. So what is this perpetual inventory system? It provides a continuous record of the balances in both the inventory account and our cost of goods sold account. So what we're going to be looking at here for our example here are some tr transactions for the period here. So we're going to have a beginning inventory here of $1,200 and the cost per unit on that inventory is $12 each here. And then we're going to have purchases for the period here of $10,800 and then we'll have sales here for the period of $14,400. And then we're going to have an ending inventory here per our books here of $4,800 here. So let's go and look at our how we uh, do our transactions here with this perpetual inventory system. First for our sales here of $14,400. We'd record uh, sales revenue or credit our sales here of $14,400 on our income statement. And then we our debit amount here would go to accounts receivable for $14,400 on our balance sheet here. Uh, since we uh, just assume we sold all these uh, uh, all our product here as at a receivable here. So then the next thing we have to do uh, with our perpetual system here is to determine the cost of goods sold or the inventory that we uh, cost per those sales that we here had here $14,400. So that's simple enough to do here. We have our perpetual inventory account. Now remember that this gets updated continually here. And we determine here, we reduce it here by $7,200 per those sales here. And that was done here just by doing a simple calculation here where we had 600 units that we sold here and the cost was $12 per, per unit here. So uh, our our cost here for those sales or our inventory cost was $7,200. So we go into our our inventory account here, this perpetual inventory account, and reduce it here by $7,200. And then we'd uh, our credit it, our perpetual inventory here for $7,200. And then we would go in debiting amount here, we go to the cost of goods sold on those sales here, debit it here for $7,200, which reduces our sales revenue here since the cost of goods sold is again on our income statement here. So uh, for this cost of goods sold account here, first this cost of goods sold is recorded at the time time that each sale or each sale is made here by debiting the cost of goods sold and crediting on our inventory. So uh, again, just going through here, each time we have a sale, we have to calculate our cost of goods sold. So with this perpetual inventory system, we're constantly updating our inventory account here and our cost of goods sold. For each, for each sale, you have to recognize a cost of goods sold and a reduction here in our inventory. So let's take a little closer look at this perpetual inventory account here. So uh, with this inventory account here in the perpetual system, the company records all purchases and sales or issues here of goods directly to this inventory account as they occur. So each time we have a sale, we have to up or we have a sale, we have to update our inventory account, or if we have a purchase of inventory, we have to up or increase our inventory account based on that purchase here. So, and then the purchases of merchandise for resale or raw materials for production are debited again to an inventory account here rather than to a purchases account. So if you're familiar with the periodic inventory system, you would be using a purchases account here for any purchased material here. So let's go again and look at, a little closer at this per perpetual inventory on how we keep track of it here based on our example. So at the beginning of our inventory amount here, we had $1,200. So we would have deb our debited or the beginning inventory here is at $1,200, a debit amount here. And then for the period here, we had purchases of $10,800 of inventory. So we would have again debited it or increased our inventory here by $10,800. So when we made the purchase, we directly went in here and credited or debited our inventory account. And then for the uh, sale that we had here of $14,400, we would have uh, recognized here our inventory cost of $7,200 that we calculated. So we would have credited or reduced our inventory account by that $7,200. So uh, then our net amount here after our reduction here of 7200 we have a net amount here in our uh, perpetual inventory account here of $4,800. And that was the ending inventory amount that was given in our example here. But when you're using this perpetual inventory system, you have to do a physical count at the end of the period here to see if uh, what you have on your books here matches the 
physical count here on the inventory. So let's go down here and look at that. So by definition here, if a difference exists between the perpetual inventory balance that we have and the physical inventory account, and let's account here, they actually make a count. You go out, say at the end of the period or once a year, you go out and you actually count the inventory that you have on hand. So let's just assume here for our example here that the ending inventory balance that at the end of the period again was the $4,800 that we looked at here. And then we have a physical count. We actually went out there and counted our in inventory and it indicated that there was $4,600 actually on hand. So now we must record, in this case it's a write, write down here because we have a physical count here was less than the uh, book amount that we have here of $4,800. So what we have to do is we have to do a write down here. Now if for example here the uh, uh, we had a we went out and our physical count showed there was a greater amount of inventory than what our book amount shows then we'd have to write it up here so anyway we're using we're going to be using this inventory over and short account here so let's go up and again look at our perpetual inventory account based on our count here we determined that we had uh, we had $4,800 here on the book, but our count showed we actually had $4,600. So in this case, we would have to reduce our inventory account by $200. And what we would do is, in this case, we'd credit or reduce our inventory account by $200. And then we go over on our income statement here, and we have this, in this case, I'm just showing an inventory gain or loss here, and I'm showing it as a loss. And we use this over and short account here. So our, our credit amount here of $200 would have been debited here, uh, increase our expense here on our inventory for $200 because of this write down here. We had the $4,800 on the book less the $4,600 physical account gives us a $200 write down. So this inventory gain or loss here and I'm showing it as a expense item rather than a, or a loss item here rather than a gain item. You have to either write up or write down your inventory based on this physical count we made here. And then one last time here I have this accounts payable. I didn't point that out here. When we purchased this inventory here, we would have debited our inventory account here and just assume that we had to uh, pay for it here on account. So we would have credited our accounts payable or a liability account for that $10,800 amount here. So just in review here with the perpetual inventory system, we record all our purchases here and, and disbursements of inventory directly to this perpetual inventory account. And that is done at the time that either a purchase is made or a sale is made. In case of a sale here, we have to reduce our inventory based on the amount of sale or the cost of that sale here. And then it goes over into the cost of goods sold here. And then at the end of the period here, or in usually once a year here, uh, we do a physical count of our inventory. Say we, again, I've talked about this $4,800. That was just per our book amount here. We didn't actually go out and physically know what we assume that our inventory account or a value of inventory sitting out there was $4,800. But when we went out and we did a physical count, we determined that we only had $4,600 of inventory. So we had to reduce our inventory here based on what the physical count is and the difference here was $200 and then we go uh, and we would reduce our inventory account by $200 and in this case we would have recognized a loss here inventory gain or loss or as what they call an over and short account here we would debit that here for $200 now remember this inventory in this case I'm showing a, a, a expense item here so that that's just an addition here to like our cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold was for each of those uh, sales that we made here, but this in essence corrects our inventory for the end of the year. So we know we can correct our inventory. So we have a um, we know exactly what's sitting here. We correct our book value to the actual amount that we have. So this is just a summary here on the basics of a perpetual inventory system and how we'd handle our inventory account here, our cost of goods sold uh, based on the sales that we made.